Our text this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 5. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> Luther had a lot to say about the devil. He had a particular gift of insight, was able to understand things as perhaps no one else could. Regarding the origin of the devil and his demons, he said, These are the facts. The devil fell. The angels fell. And the devil changed from an angel of light into an angel of darkness. <coughs> In Isaiah chapter 14, the Lord speaks to the devil, saying, How you have fallen from heaven. O morning star, son of the dawn, you have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, I will raise my throne above the stars of God, I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly. I will sit on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the grave, cast into the depths of the pit of hell. Now, Luther knew that there were good angels, and there were evil angels. But God originally created them all to be good. The evil angels made a choice. They chose to follow the Son of Dawn and were cast out of heaven right along with him. It is very likely said that they fell because of pride, because they despised the Son of God, were jealous, and wanted to exalt themselves above Him. Now in Ezekiel 28, the Lord gives us pretty good detail of how that happened. You were the model of perfection full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. You were a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until the day wickedness was found within you. You were filled with violence, and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mountain of God, and I expelled you, who once was my guardian cherub. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your great splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you. In verse 6, Jude tells us, The angels did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their very homes. Those he has kept bound in everlasting chains in the pit of darkness, waiting for judgment on the great day of the Lord. Now, Luther was convinced that all of the sadness in the world was caused by the devil, the Lord of 
death. Sadness, he said, is most certainly the work of the devil. He even called the devil the very spirit of sadness. He did that because Satan hates life and light and joy and laughter. He hates those good things and wants to drag us into the sin, destruction, and darkness in which he dwells. He wants to lead us to believe that we are helpless, <coughs> hopeless, and of no interest or concern to God. He said the devil shoots terrible, harmful thoughts into our minds and hearts. These are the flaming arrows spoken of in Ephesians chapter 6. There Paul says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish those flaming arrows of the devil. Now those attacks, those flaming arrows, that sadness, those things happen to people around us, to people whom we love. They happen to us. It's a part of life in this fallen and sinful world. Luther once spoke to a young man who was determined that God didn't love him and that Jesus wanted nothing to do with him because of his sin. These thoughts, Luther said, clearly come from the devil. The problem comes from the devil. The solution comes from God and his word. Luther then read thus, For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. He then asked that young man if he believed those words. And he could not answer him. The devil, Luther concluded, was focused on trying to keep this person away from the word of God. Now, one of the great things about Lutheranism is the distinctions that we're able to make in a systematic way within our theology. We're able to distinguish between the law and the gospel, between righteous and godless, between good and evil. And here, we're able to distinguish between the sadness and despair that comes from the world and the devil as opposed to the sadness and despair that comes from God's law convicting us of our sins. Sadness and despair are a part of godly repentance that leads to salvation. But once you repent and seek and receive the mercy and forgiveness of God, the sadness and despair no longer exist, and you are joyful and grateful to God once again. But worldly sorrow it is persistent beyond our ability to overcome it. And worldly sorrow brings death. Now we're redeemed from that death, from sin, and from the devil by the suffering, 
death and resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. He took the guilt of our sins, that which would cause us sorrow and regret. He took it upon himself, and he gave us in its place the righteousness that was his through a life of perfect obedience. Nothing is required, demanded, or expected from us, from God. All that we need to do to be saved is to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, accept it, and trust it. And once again, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Now, one of the other great things about Luther was that he was truly a visionary. He could see how all of humanity is locked up in this epic battle between the righteousness of God and the godlessness of death and destruction from the devil. Judgment day is coming. But until that time, we are caught in that epic battle. 1 Peter chapter 5 once again tells us, be self-controlled and alert because your enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a hungry lion, looking for someone to devour. So, how do you protect yourself from that? How do you protect your loved ones from becoming a victim of the devil in this epic, eternal struggle for souls. There is but one solution to the problem. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds focused on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.